what Ricky said, you're very, very welcome here today. This is my first time in Leeds. Is everyone from Leeds? Yeah. Mixture, mixture. Well, so far, it's a very nice morning. Uh, you're very, very welcome. Um, as Ricky said, um, I'm just over from, um, from Dublin uh, this morning to talk to you guys. So um, I'm just going to introduce myself. I know I've met some of you already, um, and I'll be hanging around afterwards. If anyone wants to say hello or has any HubSpot-related questions, I'll do my best to answer. Um, so I am a senior customer success manager in HubSpot in Dublin and um, so my job is to work with customers after they've well, become, become customers but after they've learned how to use the tools. I think someone's going there. No, they don't. Um, so I work with um, customers who use um, the, the professional and enterprise packages. So my job all day long is to be on the phone with customers, my own book of customers driving value, helping them understand the new tools, um, and kind of like a half a account management role, but then half marketing and sales strategy as well. Okay, so I kind of put together some facts about myself, and I did this yesterday, and then I thought it was really weird, but then I didn't uh, have time to change it, so I'm just going to fly through them. <laughs> so this is a picture of someone on, who fell off a bike, because I can't ride a bike, and it's very embarrassing, and it does omit me from a lot of social activities. Um, big fan of the English language, big fan of good grammar. So if there are any mistakes in here, please don't tell me, because it'll just upset me. <laughs> I'm currently watching Ozark. I'm not sure if anyone's a Breaking Bad fan. would we'll recommend this. It's pretty decent. Um, I am a classically trained singer. I'll take requests at the end. I thought this was a microphone I was going to start singing, but it's just, uh, it's just recording me, so it's quite disappointing. And I'm currently reading uh, a book called Rebecca. Yeah, it's kind of like a gothic book. Definitely recommend it. So kind of like a weird speed dating just from that <laughs> So that's me. I'm an only child, so that's why I kind of did this. So <laughs> what I'm here to talk to you guys today is about uh, some announcements from our inbound conference. Um, it's an annual conference um, for sales and marketers, account managers, prospects each year in Boston. Any chance anyone was there this year? Oh, yeah, Hannah. <laughs> Who was your favorite keynote? John Cena. Yeah, <laughs> someone said that yesterday. I was really not going to enjoy it. I was really <laughs> going to get And then I thought it was amazing. Anyone, everyone know John Cena? He's like a good friend of mine, uh, phil philanthropist and like wrestler. Um, he like finished he was, off. He was just really good. How he like he knew his audience. He was well put together. Yeah. Because yeah, he he was the last keynote. Yeah. He li literally finished the entire um, mm -hmm. few days. Like he was the last person. He was such a humble guy, and he said himself he's kind of left of center. He's like I'm not sure why I'm here, but I think the whole point is kind of like your own personal yeah. brand. And you're, you were saying earlier how you're kind of working on awareness for the company. Yeah. So he was very interesting. I think you can watch his keynote online if anyone has any interest as well. Um, anyway, it's a very cool event, and if anyone wants to go next year, I get in touch with me. I might be able to swing some tickets. Um, so what I want to talk to you guys is about five new announcements. Um, I think most people might be using HubSpot, um, but um, Chris, I think you mentioned you're still kind of considering solutions. Is that right? You're not using HubSpot right now. We're gotcha. Using it at the moment. Gotcha. Um, kind of considering. It. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, so if, is there anything? Is there anything here that I covered that you kind of doesn't tick any of your boxes? Here we can have a little chat later on as well. Um, so I want to talk about the five new announcements. Um, but I'm kind of kind of going to talk around it um, through the the lens of our ecosystem. Um, so this is this is what we offer right now. If anyone doesn't know, we started off as just a marketing tool a couple a few years ago. I've kind of branched out now into sales, CRM at the heart of everything, and these two other elements of the ecosystem I want to cover as well. So I'll be coming back to this kind of model a couple of times. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the nitty gritty of how the tech works. I do kind of want to focus more on the why. Um, so why is HubSpot kind of investing in these areas? Why are these the big announcements? And then also maybe why these areas of the ecosystem should be relevant to your business as well. If anyone wants to get into the nitty gritty or has specific questions again, I will do my best to answer later on. Um, but my goal for today, I'm hoping that you guys might kind of take four things away, four things that you can like action today, tomorrow, when you're back in the office next week. Um, so four actions that we'll talk about at the end, but what they'll do, I hope, is help you drive traffic um, to your site and rank higher for your keywords. I think everyone wants to do that one. Um, ensure you get the credit for the work that you do. I'm sure there's a lot of hard workers in the room, so we'll touch on that. Identify if you're using the right sales tools. Um, or just even know more about the sales tools that we offer um, and ensure that your customers renew and become promoters, which is a big one as well. We'll talk a bit more about that later. 
But in terms of the announcements, we'll start with the first one. Um, so I'm going to talk about the evolution of search. Um, so I'm sure everyone knows search is changing the whole time. Um, and just to give an example, I guess, the way we used to search was very like broad, like very short tail keywords. If anyone wants to know where to eat, we might put in restaurants, leads, and X amount of searches would come up. Um, but these days, apparently, you know, we kind of search the way we speak. So it's more like, where is the best place to eat near me right now? Does anyone disagree? It's kind of long tail keywords, we just write how we speak. Um, so two things to note um, about search. The first, our search behavior has changed, definitely, like I just demonstrated. But also it's important to note that Google's algorithm has changed as well, continues to change. Um, so what, we've, what we're learning now at the moment is that Keywords are still very important and when you're trying to identify what blog posts you want to write about but what's even more important to note is that topic clusters um, are huge right now. Um, topic clusters is, is a way to organize your website and we definitely recommend that you, you, you do this because Google is, with Google's algorithm um, it's now rewarding websites that structure their websites with topic clusters. Maybe some of you are like, what the hell is a topic cluster? Please tell me what a topic cluster is. So a topic cluster is comprised of a pillar page and subtopic sub content. Okay? So a pillar page is a website page or a dedicated area on your website that talks all about one area. Okay? And I'm going to show you an example in a second. I'll put one of HubSpot's ones. And then your subtopic content is the other content that's related to that topic. Um, it could be a blog post or um, an ebook or something like that. So I'll just give, show you an example of what I'm talking about. Sorry, just scroll up there. So HubSpot identified that marketing automation is a topic that we want to be found for. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, so what we did is we, pu we pulled together all of our assets that we have around uh, marketing automation and built this entire site page dedicated to this topic. Okay, so you can see here, just to give you an idea of what's on this, starts with a definition. What is marketing automation? Goes into some detail there. And then in the middle there, we have some links away from that pillar page to the subtopic content, such as blog posts. Okay, keep scrolling, more resources then, some toolkits and some ebooks around the same topic, marketing automation. And again, bringing people away from the pillar page to those um, subtopic pages. And at the end, frequently asked questions. Okay, so this is an example of a pillar page, a designated area around that topic that we've identified we want to be found for. Okay, when you link your pillar page to those blog posts and to those landing pages, that hyperlink is super important because you're kind of telling Google this is all related. And then vice versa, then those blog posts, those landing pages should have a hyperlink back to the pillar page. And that's the cluster. I'll just show you what that looks like. So why should you do this? Um, I'm not telling everyone to go back and restructure their whole website. Absolutely not the point. But four benefits of doing this. The first is that because all the content is linked, if one page gets a lot of traffic and is doing really well, all those other pages are going to get a boost as well because of those hyperlinks back and, back and forth. Okay? And the second one then, um, they will drive more traffic and we have a lot of results that it, it is working. A lot of my customers are already doing this identifying a topic they want to rank for, creating a whole designated area on their website, and the, the results are insane. Um, so without working for you in the background, you can focus more on content creation or social strategy, wherever else you want to um, put your time into. Better user experience for visitors. So if you guys imagine, if you want to learn more about marketing automation, you type it into Google, you find this whole designated area about that one topic you want to read about. It makes sense. You're going to read a lot in cloud nine. Everything's there. And a the fourth benefit then is that Google will easily recognize you as a subject expert on that matter. So if you think about it, if I was to type in marketing automation into Google, Google is going to be much more inclined to send me to a website that has a whole designated area on that topic than, than a website who has a blog post here landing page there, but it's all kind of disconnected. Make sense? Do you know your heads? Yeah? Um, the, and just to show you what it looks like then, the, the tool that we've announced is called Content Strategy. Everyone, anyone seen it? Who's using HubSpot? A few nodding heads again. Mm -hmm. um, it is live in the, the professional and the enterprise packages, um, and this is what it looks like. So you'll see here, this is like the, the, the topic itself that they've put in manually, and then 
this, the, these are the subtopic clusters around it. So these are like the, the, the blog post topics. And this green link here is telling HubSpot um, that everything is connected on the website. So that will look gray or broken if there's no link on the website itself. Yeah, any questions on that? What does the encryption key management refer to? That's the that's, solution they're selling? Yeah, that's, 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 it's not the solution. They're, um, the, it's the topic they've identified as something they want to rank for. I think it's one of the things that they sell. Okay. Yeah, so you would, put ma you would manually type in the, the topic that you're trying to target and then, or the name of the pillar page. Yeah, any other questions? If you think of any, we can come back to it. Okay. Um, so the reason that, or sorry, with the keyword tool, if anyone uses that, what you can see there is like monthly search volume, competitiveness, there's a lot of statistics you can see with that keyword tool. You'll also be able to see the same statistics here. And what you can do is, let's say you've identified four different topics that you want to be found for, and you've had time to, maybe over the next few months, create four pillar pages. We'll also have a dashboard for each of those pillar pages to show you engagement, traffic, sessions as well. So you can see which of the pillar pages are working best for you. And if, if you want to be found for one of the other topics, you'll see it's not getting as much traffic. You'll be able to know that's where you need to invest your time, maybe create more content. Okay. Can the subtopic content be used in different pillar pages? Yes, if it's all relevant. Yeah. But I guess I would question then, why is it not all on the one pillar page? What are you thinking of? Um, so I'm thinking of one of my clients is a solicitor. So I'm thinking that the, the different areas that yeah. But then some of the, the blog articles cover both I know areas what you mean. of law. So if we're talking about one area of law and those, those different blogs that explain it. Yeah, that makes sense. But then sense. there's another one that's... Crossover. Yeah, that makes sense, 100%. Yeah. yeah, you won't get any kind of error message to say this is already linked in a different yeah. pillar page, so that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. And just to give you the why, the reason that we're investing in this, the reason this is a big announcement um, at Inbound is because your content strategy has to change to be found online. A lot of people are starting to do this, these designated areas, these pillar pages. So if you're not kind of going along with Google's algorithm and knowing what it needs you to do with your website, your competitors will likely get more um, traffic than you. Google will send visitors to them over you. Okay, super important one. So let's go back to the ecosystem model then. So content strategy obviously kind of falls into the marketing hub. Okay, so the next one I'm going to talk about this is a big uh, point of, of conversation at um, Inbound is sales. Is anyone wearing a sales hat? Are we all marketers? Okay, a few hands. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, anyone this isn't relevant to, apologies, but you know, it's good to know um, what's available if you want to take it back to your, um, to your teams and whatnot. Um, so specifically the needs of sales teams. So we started branching out into sales a couple of years ago. Um, and when it started, we, we kept changing the packages that we offered. So it started off with something called Signals, and that was kind of lightweight, and it was kind of just auto automation. And then we got rid of that, and then started with Sidekick, and kept changing it, and then we got rid of that. And most recently, we have Sales Pro. And the reason we kept changing um, all of the offerings is because we quickly realized that like, different sales teams need different things, depending on the size, depending on the in industry, depending on the processes. Um, so now what's going to happen November 1st, we're going to have, we've repackaged everything and we have three new offerings. Uh, we have Sales Free and we have Sales Starter. Um, free is always a fun word. So that is literally free. Um, and Sales Starter, so they're kind of lightweight, um, kind of much cheaper versions. But what I wanted to focus on is sales professional. This is kind of for a more robust, advanced um, sales teams that need more functionality. Um, so with the Sales Pro, uh, sales turning into sales professional, there are four new things you'll be able to do. And even people who aren't using it, just in general, it might be good for you to know that this is possible. Um, workflows is uh, up to now has just been part of the marketing side, and um, we will have um, sales people will be able to use workflows now on um, the sales side, meaning they can um, take a lot of work off the marketers who currently have to set up a lot of stuff for them, like deal creation or rotation or create tasks. Um, sales people will be able to automate their own tasks, automate um, deals going through the pipeline themselves, el eliminate a whole lot of admin, um, which is always good. Reporting, then you are going to have some more custom um, functionality and a new additional dashboard as well. Um, predictive lead scoring, 
and then it's on the enterprise package and we have predictive lead scoring on the marketing side but this is going to be part of the sales side as well um, predictive lead scoring means that like salespeople can prioritize their outreach so they're kind of focused on just the leads who are the, who HubSpot is telling them yeah based on these guys behavior so far it's pretty it's pretty likely these guys will be customers and um, so it just means they don't have to waste time kind of um, qualifying poor fit leads and then the products tool then um, what you can do with HubSpot now is associate a deal um, with your offering so maybe you offer products or services what you have to do right now is create like a custom contact property to, uh, to, to manually kind of associate it but with products what you can do is kind of just lift your, your, your product page or your pricing page and kind of put it into HubSpot HubSpot knows exactly what you offer um, and then you can just associate the deal automatically that's a good one for managers because it means you can see at a, at a glance what's working really well, what's selling really well, and then marketers can, can go back in and kind of remarket to um, customers who already sold, bought certain things. Okay, um, so the reason that we're kind of focusing on sales so much and the reason that it was a big, uh, big one at, at Inbound is because it's so important to match your sales tools with the needs of your sales team. Um, if, something, if something's wrong, maybe it's the process, maybe it's the tools. So that's that one. So obviously sales professional then falls into sales hub. Okay. So next up what I'm gonna talk about is reporting. Anyone find reporting a bit difficult? Mm. It's gonna be tricky sometimes. Um, did anyone watch the Chris O'Donnell keynote speaker keynote speak from inbound? Did you catch that one, Anna? No, oh, you're off of getting your free massage, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, well, that's good that I can steal his, his scenario and pretend I made it up. So he says, okay, picture this. So it's the end of the month and the company has hit its revenue goal. Everyone's ecstatic, but who gets the credit? I know. Sales. Mm -hmm. Sales. Yeah. Do you see my slides? <laughs> Sales team. Sales team gets the credit. And it's, it's just the way it is. Um, anyone tell me why marketers don't get the credit all the time? Definitely saw my slides. <laughs> well, that's what I say here. You don't look like you're making an impact unless you can measure it. I think it's very difficult sometimes for marketers to be able to prove what you can do. Um, I've worked in other companies before where maybe at the end of the month you're you know, reporting to upper management or the CEO and you're saying, okay, look, here's a slide. I've taken all, I've exported all the form submissions from HubSpot. We've got loads of new leads. Here's a, um, a spreadsheet from our CRM just to kind of show some revenue that I think we generated. Um, and here's like Google Analytics statistics. And it's all just disjointed and they just want to see one black and white set of figures. What did you actually contribute to? Um, so it can be very difficult. Um, we have a new tool now called Campaign Analytics. Anyone seen this yet? Um, it's, it's really going to help you prove. Have you seen it? It's on a tab. It's on a tab. Yeah. It has that lovely big new button beside yeah. it. Um, <laughs> campaigns in itself has been a tool for the last couple of years, but it, the, the reporting on it hasn't been great. Um, but with this new tool, what you'll really be able to do is prove um, that you're contributing to the bottom line based on the campaigns that you're running. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. Sorry if that's a bit difficult to see. Um, but specifically what you're going to be able to report on are things like um, comparing campaigns to each other. So you can actually sit down and say, okay, based on um, that webinar that we ran last month, this is how well it did compared to the webinar three months ago. This is how well the email campaign did compared to the event we ran two months ago. Um, and you don't need to be using um, HubSpot CRM, just as long as your deals are connected in, somehow, in some way with, AP, sorry, with API or um, native integration. Um, you'll also be able to report on, you can see a list of new contacts created by that campaign, but also contacts who've been influenced by that campaign, not just new contacts. Um, how much revenue a campaign influenced, a real big one, and just properly prove the impact that marketing is having on sales. And it's so important, the reason that we're investing this is for two reasons. One is because it's so important that everyone gets the credit for the work that they do. I know it's so annoying when you put so much work in, you can't really see the figures about what exactly happened. And the other reason is, is so that you can make informed decisions. You can say, okay, that webinar is really working for us, so we can prove where you should spend your time, your money, and your resources. Any questions on that one? So campaign analytics kind of falls into marketing and um, and sales. You can't truly report on how much you contributed to the bottom line until you have like closed deals and new customers, but you can kind of monitor it throughout the marketing as well. Okay. HubSpot Connect. Is anyone connecting any systems with HubSpot? What are you connecting? Salesforce. Salesforce. How do you find the integration? Good. Not bad. Good. 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 Um, 
if anyone doesn't know HubSpot Connect, what we're talking about here is the integrations that we can we can set up. So um, currently there's a ton of native integrations like Salesforce, like um, SurveyMonkey, um, PandaDoc, AdRoll, Perfect Audience, so on, so on. Um, and there's a lot of um, a lot of our partners were there this year um, at Inbound, and it's a big one. So we've announced two new native integrations, and um, the first being Terminus. Anyone using Terminus? Anyone doing or planning to do account-based marketing? For anyone who doesn't know what account-based marketing is, just in case, it's like creating your hit list of companies that you want to target as opposed to kind of waiting for them to come to you and making sure your content is, intent is in front of them. So Terminus is a, it's an American company, so this integration will be kind of live early next year. Um, but specifically, what you can do with integration includes two things like um, triggering campaigns based on workflow criteria and then seeing all the statistics there in Terminus and then just using ads more strategically. So creating your hit list and then using Terminus to get the content in front of the people who are at that company. Kind of like subliminal messaging, I think. Not so subliminal. And the second one then is Shopify. Anyone using Shopify? Hannah, you mentioned Magento. Are you yeah. using Magento? Yeah, give you nods. Um, if anyone doesn't know what Shopify is, it's just like an e-commerce platform that you can like manage an online store on your website. Anyone not sell anything directly on the website? Yeah, so customers have to talk to you to give you money. <laughs> Fair. Um, with Shopify, what you'll be able to do is kind of custom reporting, custom segmentation, um, nurture, repeat customers, and a really big one there, increase revenue by recovering abandoned shopping carts. Um, so if anyone doesn't sell anything online, if possible, I would urge you to do so because um, it is a real big, big revenue stream. But this last one here, I read a statistic only, only yesterday, I'm going to forget it. Um, Baynard Institute, um, it's a UK company, they, they, they analyse e-commerce platforms and advise yay or nay whether to go with them. And they said that of every cart that's created, 68% um, is abandoned, which is very sad. I'm an avid shopper, I would never leave any cart unabandoned. <laughs> but um, it's interesting because if people just like create the cart and they need to run away to a meeting, they create the cart, they want to think about it, send it to their friend, whatever it is, there's so much opportunity left on the table there. So with Shopify or with Magento, if you have it integrated with HubSpot, it just means you can use workflows to like remind those people, like, hey, you know, you still time to get that Halloween costume, whatever, whatever it might be, send those reminders to them. It's a pretty big one. So the reason that these two and that we're investing in these two is because it's so important to never miss a sales opportunity. Any questions on those ones? Cool. Okay, so the, that's the connect part of our ecosystem. Um, so I've covered content strategy, sales professional, campaign analytics, and integration. So it's like, now what? So I think like Darmesh and Brian are our co-founders, and we talk, we, they talk to us a lot um, and with the development team to kind of share the vision so we know where the company is going, what we're trying to offer customers. Um, so with everything that we've offered so far, where they're just trying to make sure, oh, spoiler alert, they're just trying to make sure that you have the tools that you need. But I think up until now, we talk a lot about um, putting the customer first, but we haven't given you, the customers, the tools to put your customers first or to manage that. But we have our new tool called Customer Hub. Um, anyone hear about this one yet? Um, this is going to help you manage um, your contacts after they start giving you money. Um, so it'll just mean you can manage like the relationship and nurture the relationship with customers um, and manage the conversations you're having with them after they um, become customers. So. The reason that this is so important is because like, businesses that truly solve for the customer in marketing and sales and throughout the entire customer experience will always earn a competitive advantage. Okay, so putting the customer first. So I, I like this one because it means you can focus on the delight stage of the buyer's journey. So there's five main things that you can do with Customer Hub. Um, so the first is manage customer inquiries and turn a chat into a ticket creation or escalation. Anyone using anything like Zendesk? Yeah, a few nods. Um, how do you find that? Uh, it's a different team to use it, to be honest. Okay, gotcha. You can go back and tell your team that this is coming out as well. <laughs> We're just trying to get people to use as much host as possible. Um, it's a handy one, though, because anyone using the, li using the live chat option, it's like if you go on to, if you go on to a website and you chat to, to someone in the live chat, if it's a technical query, you don't have to tell that customer. Actually, if you can just call our support desk, they can help you. You can turn that conversation into a, into a, a ticket through the chat. 
um, so it's a really good customer experience. Um, you can automate customer feedback and focus on NPS, you know who your, who your happy customers are. Um, and you can also create and manage a knowledge centre. If anyone's familiar with our HubSpot Academy, you could be able to build something like that with what you have. Um, and like I mentioned, build and nurture those relationships. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty big one, because um, so far, up, up until now, the tools have been focusing, focused on driving traffic, generating leads and closing deals, but nothing after that. You have to use something else. So now it'll all be in the one spot. Um, and the reason we've invested in this is because good customer experience equals promoters. I, like I mentioned, I work with a lot of customers, and whenever I'm on the call, a customer is like, well, we need to do a CRM integration, a website migration, or we just need more help on the social strategy front. Can you recommend somebody? Everyone kind of wants to work with someone that you know will do a good job or has done a good job with someone in your industry in the past. Um, so this is why this tool is really cool. And obviously, promoters equals referrals equals more money. That's what we all want. Um, Conversations kind of lives with Customer Hub as well. Um, conversations, what it is, is like one shared customer inbox. So let's say, let's, Hannah, let's say you're talking to a customer today and they maybe message you on Facebook, they DM'd you or message you on Twitter or emailed you or Slacked you, whatever you use to talk to that customer. And let's say you're off tomorrow, off skiving for the weekend. And then <laughs> the customer comes back through maybe the live chat, you know, a different channel to try and talk to you and you're not there. I can pick it up, but I don't have to ring the customer and say, hey, I hear you're pissed off about that thing that's not working. Mm -hmm. Hannah's not here today. Can you remind me what you were talking about? That's just not a good customer experience. So sorry if it's a bit hard to read, but you're just going to have the different channels here in the one place. So what it is, is a unified, um, unifying multiple channels. So everything is there within the tool. You know exactly what that person spoke to and um, that customer about the day before. Okay. So that'll pull in from LinkedIn messages yeah. everywhere yeah. into that one place. Yeah. And is that all recorded in, is that part of the CRM there? Yeah. Well, well is, sorry, is it's going to be. It, it's not live yet, no. It's going to be early next year. They're still building the functionality. We tend Are to. looking for people to be to that as well, right? I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab your details afterwards yeah, and I'll, I'll go through, I'll check my emails now. Yeah. yeah Definitely. You think that might be an interesting one? Is it free I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that yet. I think conversations, yeah, it's, it's going to be free as part of the CRM, but then the customer hub might be priced next year. Yeah, talk to you about that one. And the second thing that you'll be able to do, like I mentioned, is kind of just give you context. You know exactly what's happening with that customer up until that moment. Okay. Anyone want to talk about bots? Bots are fun. Bots are happening. Um, if anyone doesn't know, we've acquired a new a company called Motion AI. So they're like a chat bot. Um, technology company and we've also invested in Drift which is a conversation driven tool you know when you go onto a, a website and you live chat someone and um, so currently our co-founder Darmesh is obsessed with this stuff so it's um, definitely happening and um, if anyone isn't too sure what it is it's like if you go onto a, a website and you can live chat someone you know more often than not there's someone there to chat you back but there's a new, there's a new functionality now where you can ask a machine the question and if that company has built a flow in the background to answer simple questions, you're going to get an answer from a smart machine as opposed to a person. Okay. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, they're building it out right now, but it's going to be live early next year is the plan. So they're building the functionality into, this, into the software right now. Any questions on bots? You're a bit sceptical? Got a heckler over here. People like to talk to people, don't they? Yeah. But well, what if you just want the answers? What if, what if it's a question like, how do I ring you? I know what you mean. I, but I think everyone wants information in different ways. And yeah, if it's different a times as well. Different yeah. times. And if it's, a question, if, you're, if it's a question that you just want a quick answer to, that's what it's for. It's more like, yeah. how do I contact your support team? Here's the number. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of, how much would it cost me for... Uh, for uh, list price if I bought X, Y, and Z. Here you go. You know, it's those kind of questions. I totally agree. But are they, is it machine learning or is it actually canned responses? As in, they're agreed responses? Um, the, the function I have to building right now is just gonna, it's just gonna be the, thing, the, the flows that you build. Yeah. You tell the machine what to say based on the question. But the, the, the plan is with Motion AI, they have some technology. It's insane. The hope is that it will be machine learning. So. 
<laughs> I don't know too much about it. Um, and the thing is, as I read this statistic recently as well, it's by Gartner, it's like a research um, firm in the States, it said by 2020 they predict that 30% of our interactions will be through conversations with smart machines based on how things are going right now. Well, it's a little bit creepy, but um, it's definitely very interesting. So that's where we're investing as well, and we're spending a lot of our time here because bots help growing businesses scale one-to-one -one communications. Although people like to talk to a person, it might, might be feasible the whole time. Okay. So just to refer back to the ecosystem again, so I've kind of talked about content strategy in the marketing side, sales professional on the sales side, campaign analytics kind of falls on both sides, um, customer hub, conversations, and bot flows all kind of live in that same section, um, and the integrations then in the connect area. Um, if you are finding it difficult right now, it's either the processes or the tools or something something wrong. So just to make sure you get the credit for that you do, I would try and re um, review that. And um, three then are sales tools. We talk a lot in HubSpot about marketing and sales alignment. And the people I talk to on the phone, half of them are like, yeah, we have a good conversation with sales. We meet regularly. And um, we talk about processes. We try to make things easy for each other, make sure we're, um, our vision is shared and we're all working towards the same goals. Not always the case, I know. I talked to a lot of marketers and they're like, no, we don't talk to sales. It's totally separate. Because I'm getting a few, <laughs> a few chuckles, it sounds familiar. Um, so even if you're banging your head against a wall and you feel like you're the person who's always trying to knock on the sales door to improve things, I would urge you to try again. It's going to make your life easier. <laughs> and step four then, um, customer service, putting the customer first. Think about the last time one of your customers truly said to you, I'm so happy we worked together. I'm so happy you went the extra mile for me. Maybe your focus right now is on lead gen, but don't forget about your existing customers who are giving you money. Um, so I would say identify ways to enhance their experience. Again, if it's the tools or the time or where you're focusing it, um, to make sure that you turn them into promoters, so that will lead to more money. Okay. I have a final thought. I had a. I started with John Cena and I took it out because it was a bit corny. But this is from Rand Fishkin. Or sorry, yeah, from. Um, this is what he said at Inbound, if anyone saw it online. The best way to sell something is not to sell anything at all, but to earn the awareness, respect, and trust of those who might buy. Um, and you can, this can be taken into consideration even with upsell and cross-sell. Just keep the customer in mind. Okay, That's it from me. Here are my resources. We've got everything about all the different tools there and some blog posts as well, and a link to, at the end there to the product keynote, um, where he goes into more detail about all of this. Um, any other questions that you guys want to ask me? If not, if you want to think about them, I can grab you after Ricky talks. Anything else? Any pressing? Just one of the contact clusters. Where does that sit on the website? Where does that sit? Wherever you want. Like, is it in the is it in the news resource area or is it? It's a really now? good question. It's n it, where it lives on the website is not going to impact how much traffic Google sends to you as long as it exists somewhere. So, so far the customers I'm speaking to who are building them, some of them have added like another element of navigation on the homepage, depending on how much focus you want on it. Like if you're going to be building four different ones, you don't want to add a whole ton of navigation. So it's not, I wouldn't worry about where it is. Um, because the idea is that you'll be found organically for it, not necessarily some landing on the homepage. But where to start there, it's not like you start with a blank page. Um, a lot, in work we kind of talk about it a lot and we have our, Matt Barbie, he's like our SEO expert, he's a British guy, lives in the States, absolutely genius. He has his own website, Matt Barbie. Um, he, he advises that you pick, have a look on page performance or whatever analytic tool you use, ha identify some of the pages that currently get good traffic and see if you could turn that page into the pillar page. Thanks guys.